and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is Power Automate exception handling and how we can use the result expression to obtain more details about the success of a specific action. Let's go. So on this channel we have talked about how to catch exceptions using scopes. We've also talked about tracking metadata related to the execution of a flow itself. Uh, that was a recent video, actually last week's video around getting the runtime metadata. So do check that out if you haven't seen it thus far. Now what we want to do here is we want to be able to understand why a flow has failed. So certainly through using scopes and a, a try catch semantics, you can go ahead and, and understand when your flow has failed. But what if you want to know more details about why it failed? Yes, you can go ahead and look at the run history. But if you want to pass this information into some sort of like centralized logging repository, how can you go about getting the specific details about why an action has succeeded or failed in this circumstance? Now there is a not so well known expression called result that can help us. How we use this expression is we pass in the name of an action as an input parameter and it will give us details about whether or not that action was successful or if it failed. Naturally, it'll give us deeper information than just a Boolean, you know, either way, if it succeeded or if it failed. So this is a strategy that we can go ahead and use in order to capture those details and then pass them to our central logger component. Now, in this case, we're also interested to know when a group of actions has succeeded or failed. You wouldn't want to be checking this on a per action basis. So you wouldn't want to be like, oh, I sent an email, did it work? Oh, I then went and uploaded something to SharePoint, did it work? What we can do is we can pass in the name of our scope and then be able to check on the collective outcome of that scope and then pass that information down to our logging component. Now, if there is a failure within the scope, we're going to see some pretty detailed information and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit later in the demo. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless360 at serverless360.com. Okay, so here we are and I will get into the demo, show this there in real time as well. But just to give you a sense of what we're talking about here, I've got a try shape. Notice I've got, it's called scope-try. Do note that the naming of your scope uh, has a big impact here in terms of what is the expression that you will provide. When you do provide spaces inside of your action name, they do get replaced with underscores underneath the hood. So that's why to keep things simple, I've just had the word scope-try and then I can easily put that in as my input value when trying to capture the result for that. So what I've got is I've got a scope here. I'm going to have my actions in it to keep things simple. I have a simple one, but this works if we have multiple. I'm going to put a bad URI in this action on purpose so that we know this will fail. I'm subsequently going to create another scope and it's only going to run when I have a failure, a timeout, or if I'm skipping the action here itself. Then I just have a composed shape or action that's going to capture the overall result of this specific scope. And when it actually goes ahead and runs, it's going to fail. And as a result, we're going to be able to see some detailed information here. So let's go ahead. Let's dive right into that demo and see this in action. Okay, here's that flow that I talked about earlier in the slides. Here's my action. Do note, I did go ahead and remove retries. This will still work, but I didn't want this to retry four times before it went ahead and failed. And then also, as I mentioned, I've got configure run after here. So I've got has failed, is skipped, has timed out. So if this succeeds, we're not actually gonna go ahead and run this. You could do that as well if you wanted. You could have a finally 
that would always run regardless of whether it was a failure or successful. Um, but here I'm only interested in the failures itself. Now what is interesting here is you won't find the result. If you start typing in here, you won't actually find this, um, but it is a supported expression. You're gonna find it in both Logic Apps and Power Automate as well. So let's go ahead, let's run this. I'm just gonna do a simple manual test and this will just run in a few seconds here. Okay, so it's done. Now we can go ahead and see that we've got an action that has failed, right? We've got an unresolvable host error and it's giving us some specific information. And as a result of this HTTP action failing, our tri-scope has failed as well. So that's going to kick off our exception handler, which will be our scope-catch. And then as part of that failure, we can go ahead and get more information about it. And we could go ahead and parse this out further, right? So we can use essentially JSON path to go ahead and obtain the specific details that are related to it. So kind of depends to what level of granularity you're looking for in terms of capturing this error, but you now know that you've got a very specific error. And in this case, we've got an unresolvable host name, which we do see up here. And then we see the exact same error message, the provided host name, my bad URL dash, you know, where it could not be resolved because it's a, it's a bad URL. Now it's also important to know that you might be wanting to use this with Power Automate Desktop. So what happens if we call a desktop flow and we receive an error and that error gets bubbled up back up to the cloud but we see the details and yes, the answer is yes. Whatever shows up here, whatever those errors that are captured, um, you know, from our process, we will be able to access them through here. So quick and short demo, but it is pretty powerful. And it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes you've got a personal productivity flow. If it fails, not a huge issue, but when you do have mission critical processes where you're automating them and you need that visibility and you need to be able to track the specific exceptions, the result expression will help you out. So I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you again soon on the channel. All right, so thanks for checking out another episode on the channel. I hope you found this useful. If you're not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to do so. You can find me at Wearsy. In addition, likes, subscribes, comments are always welcome. Go ahead and hit that up inside of YouTube. Thanks again, and we'll see you again soon on the channel. Take care.